Buckley here, and I would like to welcome you to another Death by Bungie video. Where to aim, how to aim on a deer with your crossbow. It's a very important topic. It's one of the most watched videos here on Death by Bungie, one I did years and years ago. But times change. That's the theme of 2024's crossbow seasons, isn't it? Times change. Crossbows change. Even deer change. I've been talking about that in various videos. And this video needs to be redone. We need a new version of this video that takes into account modern crossbows. A little bit of history Death by Bungie. Ten years plus hunting with an old slow crossbow. The original Bungie still hangs in the trophy room to this day. Retired now, pretty much, right? That older, slower crossbow shooting anywhere from 250 to 305 feet per second with the arrows that I chose. That uh, crossbow, you know, you have to do a certain kind of aiming. It's much more like the compound bow guys, right? Those speeds are. With modern crossbows, once I started hunting with the slick black Cadillac, the Scorpid Deathstalker, also sitting there in the trophy room to this day. With that crossbow, I learned pretty quick that at modern speeds, 350 feet per second and above, those crossbows have a different sort of aiming available to them, a different concept, and that is aiming where you want the arrow to go and expecting it to get there before that deer moves. That is modern crossbow hunting perfection. That's why going forward, I'm going to be hunting with a SWAT X1 or a faster crossbow going forward when I hunt white-tailed deer because I expect my arrow to get there before the deer moves. I'm not going to be guessing. Didn't go 20. <laughs> uh, 120. She did not, in fact, go 20. Yeah, that's, that's a fact. She didn't go 20. She went about 120 yards. The rage went in here. That's not a bad shot. You know, I am going to start getting myself more comfortable shooting up in here. I've always avoided this with the OB, with the original bungee. That's a lot to go through. And that's the biggest difference. Right from that moment, I realized from now on, I'm not going to be aiming back here. I'm going to be aiming more up here. Sorry, Buckley. Buckley's been through an awful lot. We actually got out in the woods yesterday, had a great morning. Man, you can see beautiful fall weather. The rut is just starting to get going here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Buckley, I'm sorry we didn't see any action, but it certainly is a beautiful morning. But we will have some great videos coming for you. Now, what I did in the last video, I sort of used computer graphics to do it, but I don't even think that's necessary. What we do when we talk about aiming, on a deer, with really with any weapon, but with a modern crossbow, you have to take into account deer anatomy, right? I've read about this in my book. Just like Mike Tyson said, I understand anatomy. Very important that we understand anatomy. Now I'm doing this backwards from the other side and upside down, but I wanna point out a few things and I encourage you to get on the internet and look at deer anatomy diagrams. There are tons of them, they're a lot of fun. I look at them every year. I pulled them out recently on the internet to look at them when One-Eyed Archer and I were tracking a deer recently. We're gonna talk about that in this video. I pull those up and I look at them throughout the season and the off season the whole time, right? You gotta, gotta understand anatomy. So what I'm putting on here, this blue tape represents, at least from my perspective, I hope I'm accurate. I'm gonna swing over there real quick just to make sure. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty much the shoulder blade on a white-tailed deer. Now they have legs, obviously. White-tailed deer have legs. Did you know that? Did you know that? And I'm gonna put that here to represent the top. You got the shoulder blade. Really, this is back here, you know, kind of all tied in. This comes down, and then we got another one there. We're gonna make these make up some deer anatomy diagrams of our own right here. What do you think of that, right? And then of course we've got a knuckle here, elbow, what have you, joint here, and then this leg going down. So that's pretty much white tail deer anatomy. How is that? Modern, right? Modern. The last video I did had computer graphics. This one has painter's tape. How's that? But it'll work. You kind of get the idea. Now, when this deer is moving, all of these are moving, right? So when the deer ducks down to leave, the shoulder blade is going to come down there and protect this area a little bit more. I encourage you to check out a video that the Ranch Ferry did on this very topic. To me, it knocks it out of the park. Compound bow hunters have been telling us for decades that, boy, you got to avoid this, right? You got to avoid these bones. You got to avoid the shoulder blade. And you do. I get it. I get it. And that you want to be aiming back here, right? Back here farther because this stuff is surrounded by meat and tendons and big, heavy 
stuff, mass, that you can't shoot through, right? And you're not gonna go through this. You're not gonna go through these bones. So you aim back here. And they call that the vital V, the golden triangle, the bungee triangle, I called it for years, that sort of thing. That there's this sort of triangle here because from here, right, you've got a diaphragm and a liver and all that right here. Really what we're looking for on deer, and this goes to that anatomy point, we're looking for lungs and the heart, right? And that's what we're looking for, nothing else. I'll stop right there and I'll tell you, just like I did in the old video, this has not changed. We're not aiming from that diaphragm back. No, we're not aiming for that. Because there's no lungs back here. There's no heart back here. So we don't aim back. Right? And the other thing we don't do is on a deer. Can you kill a deer by shooting in the head? Sure. Can you kill it by shooting in the neck? Yeah, maybe. But these are not high percentage shots. These are not good shots. And as crossbow hunters in the modern era, we don't take those shots. So for the death by bungee crossbow hunting method, we aren't talking about anything aiming back here. We're not shooting this part. And we're not shooting from here forward either. Don't discuss it, don't think about it, don't do it. That is my advice to you from death by bungee. And that has not changed. And the reason for that isn't, isn't because you can't kill a deer by shooting it in the neck and can you shoot it in the head maybe, you know, hit the brain or whatever. But the problem with these shots is they are lower probability. They're smaller targets. They're the most movable targets on the deer. The head going up and down, the neck moving side to side, going up and down. These are not good targets, especially when this exists. And that's what we're gonna talk about and focus on. The problem with this too is if it goes bad, it goes really bad. It makes the deer not die, but suffer and carry around an arrow to show the world what a bad shot you are and what bad decisions you just made. You understand where I'm going with that? You don't need a deer walking around town or your neighbor's farm with your arrow sticking out of it. The decades of compound bow hunters telling us where to aim on deer does not really translate, in my opinion, 100% to modern crossbow hunting. Modern crossbows shooting 350 to 400, 450 feet per second. And then some of you shooting the more ultra modern speeds like the Black Widow, right? The 450 feet per second and above. Those crossbows have no problem going through this area here with the meat, the tendons and all that thick stuff. It can penetrate right through there, penetrate right out the other side and go through. Not a problem. And the reason for that is momentum. The energy that modern crossbows produce is significantly different than anything the world has ever seen in terms of archery equipment. It's just that simple. And the energy that they produce is more than enough to go through here. If you hit a bone, is that a problem? Maybe, maybe, but not like it used to be. You can still go through the scapula and kill a deer with a, it's not, you don't want to aim for the scapula but you're probably going to go through this one, at least poke out the other side of the other one and disable that deer by pinning its two scapulas together. Does that kind of make sense? That's entirely a possible outcome. Don't aim for that. We're aiming down in here. But for me, I want everybody to sort of understand when we're talking about the heart and this area, this region, just like I mentioned in that video, right? Traditionally, we were aiming back here farther to get the back of the lungs and then avoid. We're only going through ribs, right? Ribs are very easy to penetrate through. Go through here, come out the other side. Today, with modern crossbows, you're pretty much not going to have problems with any kind of broadhead. A modern crossbow, 0.7 slugs of momentum and above, and shooting 350 feet per second and above. We really don't have to worry about penetration here. It's going to find its way around these, right? Uh, it's going to go through this side, maybe hit the bone on the other side, push it through, but it's still gonna find its way out the other side of the deer. I refer to that as crossbow perfection. To me, shooting my bucks last year, both of them went through, shot them up front pretty good, shot them up front pretty good, but the arrows came out the other side and laid in the food plot in the area near where that deer was. It was very easy to find the arrows. That is one beautiful, beautiful arrow. Look at that. Oh, the Burke Coyote Luminoc, well lit. The Dragon Claw Arrow covered in blood. The Swahacker. The other reason that compound bow hunters over the years kept preaching about shooting back in here, right, is that they were concerned about the deer ducking the string. And that's a big deal. For me, hunting with old slow equipment over the years with the original bungees, that was a big deal, right? I had lots of deer ducking the string. So compound bow hunters 
not crossbow hunters, but compound bow hunters like Dr. Grant Woods and the like would preach to you about aiming very, very low on a deer, uh, sort of intending for that deer to duck, predicting that that deer is going to duck. You aim down here, right? Some of them going so far as to say aim where there's no deer, which is ridiculous to me. It's ridiculous. Why would you aim where there's no deer? I want to aim where I want that arrow to go. But they were thinking, well, this deer is going to duck. And if I aim low, that scapula, as it's coming down, I'm going to still stay below that because I'm aiming low, and I might still be in the lungs, that sort of thing. I can tell you with modern crossbows, and I've done video after video after video on this, and it has been both my experience, but also the science behind it set forth in those videos. I don't worry about a deer ducking the string anymore at 35 yards and less. It's that simple. If the deer is 35 yards or closer, I'm simply going to aim where I want that arrow to go, and it's going to get there before that deer moves. You know how I know? Because I've done it time and time again with a faster, more modern crossbow. I haven't even used the ultra-modern crossbows in the field yet. So for me to aim, ideally, what I want to do when I hit a white-tailed deer with an arrow is hit the top of the heart and the bottom of the lungs. I don't have the heart on here, but I can tell you because it's not my aiming point. I'm not going to aim to the heart, right? But that heart is probably, if I had to guess, right in here. And it is when the deer is standing like this, that heart is protected by bones and the legs by design. That's how nature, that's how God designed this animal to protect its heart. That heart is behind this mass. Now, occasionally you'll see that leg swing forward as it's feeding or walking and that sort of thing, giving you an even better shot at the heart. Dr. Grant Woods will tell you, aim where the brown meets the white. To me, that is ridiculously low. And as a crossbow hunter, I will not do that. I'm going to aim above the heart at the bottom of the lungs because that's where the most arteries and veins are. And we kill deer by blood loss, right? That's how we do it with the crossbow. I'm now editing the video that you're watching. This is what it looks like in case you're interested when I edit videos. I got my templates all set up here for different things that I do. And we got this, that's what our video is looking like. I want to discuss this video. I had an opportunity to hunt with friend of Bungie Jin, also known as One-Eyed Archer, and this is his video from his hunt. And I want to thank him, not just for the opportunity to hunt with him, but the opportunity to share it with you. He volunteered this. Now, I didn't mention this in the recent doe hunt video. I did not share this because I didn't have his permission. We hadn't talked about it, that sort of thing. Jim's got a Tacticam, as you can see, mounted on the side of his SWAT X1. There are four does in that beautiful food plot. Nice apple tree. He refers to it as the 101-year-old apple tree, trying to be like one better than the kingdom of Bungie, you know, but it is what it is. So those deer around the corner at the end of that uh, food plot are kind of going around the corner toward that apple tree in and out of there. And there's a real nice doe that he was thinking of shooting right here on the right. Now that doe has gone out and then come back and Jim takes this shot. Good looking shot, head up, boom, there it is. The night in question, we weren't able to slow this down real good on his phone, but it is nice to be able to do this in the software. Here's that shot going out, okay? And we can see where it's going. It's going, it's going. And that deer has right there taken that shot. It is now that arrow is through that deer. Do we have, first of all, any significant ducking? Not really. This is a 25-yard shot. And that arrow, we see where it hits. Now, I'm looking at that shot. When we first looked at it, we thought, boy, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Seems to be right on the money. Seems to be pretty good. The problem for me is I think that that shot is back. If you're aiming for the heart, you would want it right here. You see what I'm saying? I believe this deer does not have one leg forward. They're both together. And if we look at that, we can see that because that deer is standing broadside right there, right? Now, that deer, head up, standing alert, but with both legs together, neither one forward. And if we look at where this arrow is going, it does appear to be just behind that elbow or that knuckle, whatever you want to call it back here. So we've got the deer, we've got the scapula, we've got the leg bone, leg bone, and then this leg coming down. So it's behind that. I do believe that was behind the heart, probably through the diaphragm. Now, if we look at the online anatomy, you're going to see right through here is the diaphragm. So we might have gotten the bottom of the liver, 
got some really good arteries in there, but just not enough to bring that deer down in a short time. That's my personal opinion on that shot. Play it for you once again, just so you can form your own opinion. But that is that shot. Now, just to show you what we did, because I don't want you thinking that we sort of gave up on this deer. I can tell you, we did follow a lot of blood. We actually let that deer lay until later in the evening. I stuck around, helped Jim track that deer. We tracked that deer well past dark, and a couple of things occurred, okay? First of all, if you look at this map, this is the distance we traveled looking for that deer. It was significant. We walked a long way. We checked out a very large area, followed a blood trail that just got less and less and less, okay? The blood that was available was spilled onto the floor, either in the creek or the forest floor. We tracked that, we followed it, and went for that significant distance. I think we tracked the deer in a straight line. It's like 385 yards in a straight line that we went. We walked a lot farther than that going back and forth. Unfortunately, it ended that night with this. Yes, friends of Bungie, that is the sound of coyotes, and it is my opinion, right? We'll never know, we'll never know, but it is my opinion that that deer uh, probably expired at the hands of coyotes, or they were on that carcass before we got there. It's just one of those things, that does happen. Now, nothing in nature goes to waste, that is my honest opinion, and that certainly would apply here. So I'm going to be aiming right in here, right in the front of that bee, right here, right? I'm not aiming for the bone, I'm aiming right here. I want to go to the top of that heart, the bottom of the lungs. The deer moves down an inch or so before that arrow gets there, entirely possible. It will go clean through that deer. Now, Dr. Grant Woods and others will tell you that when a deer is feeding, wait for the deer to lift its head up because they can, in fact, use their head as a fulcrum. As the head is down and coming up, they can pull their shoulders down. That is a fact. And deer will do that time and time again because they are loading up their legs to run away. So, Shooting with the head up, sure, that's a great idea, but I can tell you it makes about an inch difference at 35 yards. This is my doe from hunting with friend of Bungie Jim. This is what the shot looked like. Now my doe, a little bit quartering too, more than I thought. I thought this was perfectly broadside, but one thing you'll take note of here, look at this beautiful sunrise in the morning. The sun is coming toward me. The doe is what we would refer to as backlit. And what that means is the sun is hitting her from behind. Just a gorgeous, beautiful shot. But it makes the deer's body more of a silhouette, as you can see here, than all the crisp, clear detail we might like to see. We are, as hunters, faced with various conditions, aren't we? And this is just one that we have here. So what I'm gonna do in this shot though, we'll look at this shot, boom, not a bad shot. It is slowed down, now I've slowed this one down. Boom, as the arrow comes out, look up here, you can see the Burt Coyote Luminoc HD Orange. Check out Luminoc.com, the knock selecting tool on there. You can use their tool, pick out the proper knock for your crossbow arrows, and you save 15% off your order if you use coupon code Bungie. How cool is that? I love the Burt Coyote Luminoc. I've been using it for years. Lit right up here, and it gets out there in the middle of the field. You can see, we can still see the orange a little bit, but as that arrow goes right up here, I remember the shot, and I remember watching that Luminoc go through that deer, just like I like to do looking through the scope. You can definitely tell where that arrow enters. Now this, I gotta say, for what I was aiming at, is dead on perfect, okay? That's where I was aiming. We'll talk about that in just a second here. My point on this video is, look at the deer ducking, okay? The, the crossbow goes off. We can still hear that, that ricochet. The deer's lifting her head, and now she's starting to think, I better start ducking. And what do we see for, let's watch the back, okay? Let's watch her back right in here and see what we've got. There, just starting to duck, right? Just starting, muscles tensing up or releasing, the body starting to drop. And deer typically are gonna drop and then run away. 
Sure, they roll, they do all kinds of gymnastics, but they got to drop first to load up the legs and make that happen. Done other videos on that. But you can see that arrow is pretty much there at this point. This is a 34 yard shot. Now, right here, boom, right there, we can see in that frame, okay, look at that. That arrow has now moved from here to here. And it's just getting here. That deer is now hit with that arrow. And again, at 34 yards, maybe an inch drop, maybe an inch drop there by the time that arrow makes impact at 34 yards. And this is shooting 360 feet per second. Now, that's good because look where that arrow is going. It's going right home free right there in what people would refer to as the vital V. It looks really good. Or does it? We're going to talk about that in just a second here. I do not concern myself with the deer ducking the string at this point anymore. This goes back to that one gun that I've been talking about this season. And you guys need to go and watch Death by Bungie, the V-Logs, show after show after show. Watch that entire season to understand what I'm talking about. But when you're switching from one crossbow to another, it's not just the fit and feel. It's not just the way the stock is in your hand or where the safety is, stuff like that that's important. It's also what that crossbow can do. And some crossbows are just better than other crossbows. They are faster and more powerful than other crossbows. I'm not hunting with an ultra modern crossbow, I'm hunting with a SWAT X1, but I now have three of them, right? Because I'm gonna be hunting with that same SWAT X1 either way, the same arrow setup, knowing what that crossbow can do and expecting it to perform identically in situation after situation. That is my one gun philosophy and that's how I will do it going forward. Switching from a modern crossbow to an antique, like I did this year is a bad idea because that antique cannot perform the way the modern crossbow does. So when my mind is still thinking in terms of what a modern crossbow can do, and I go out there and hunt and all of a sudden I'm shooting but forgetting that I'm not using a modern crossbow, that presents completely unnecessary problems and I'm not gonna put myself in that situation again. I'm going to aim right in here. Now, I'm gonna be aiming there on a deer that's broadside like Buckley here, right? What if Buckley turns for us? We're gonna see if we can do that here real quick. We'll get Buckley to turn a little bit for us and put that right there. Now, if Buckley is turned a little bit like this and quartering away, this is even better, right? Where are we aiming? Kind of to the front of the opposite leg, the opposite leg where the opposite leg comes up. So I might be aiming back a little bit, back of the lungs, but expecting it to come out in the front of the lungs, top of the heart, right? Bottom of the front of the lungs. All the veins and arteries are there. The other problem for me, and while I'm on this topic talking about the heart, I think it's important to take this into account as well. The heart is not the best target. It's not as good as the lungs and the arteries up front. And I'll tell you why. That deer can run an awful long ways before its heart gives out. It can run a long ways with no heart. People like heart shots because bang, you hit them up front in the heart and the heart spills all that blood out and you got this tremendous blood trail. The problem is if you have disabled the heart, that heart is no longer pumping. That heart's no longer pumping, right? So all of a sudden we have no more additional blood once it runs out of what's right there. You're not pumping additional blood into that blood trail and you're left with not much of a blood trail. Plus you got a deer that is not disabled and can run until it basically runs out of fuel, right? Lungs on the other hand, right? If you're up front, top of the heart, bottom of the lungs, that heart is still mostly fully functional and pumping. And it's gonna to continue to spill blood and suck all the blood out of the deer's body out of its circulatory system as it's running. And it's gonna to continue to feed that blood trail for you. It is going to make the most miraculous of blood trails. Look at examples in Death by Bungie. When I've hit deer up front, my buck in Maryland. A tree stand right there. Bungie is over there. Look at that blood, wow. Wow, holy wow. And that was with the OB, right? That was with Bungie, but shooting up front close. It was an 18 yard shot or so, 15, 18 yards, maybe 20 yards max. And it was with a heavy arrow, three inch slow hacker. That blood trail was the most ridiculous I've ever seen. It was out of scene. Like videos on YouTube get flagged for a lot less. Let's put it that way. Like I can't show you the whole blood trail, it was so bad. But that blood trail 
that's pretty impressive. And that's what we're going for. We want that every time. That's top of the heart, bottom of the lungs, you understand? And that's because that heart is still pumping, throwing that blood out all over the place. Deer run, they, but they run out of gas pretty quick because the blood is gone and because because the heart is still pumping and because those lungs run out of oxygen. And that is the quickest way to get a deer on the ground. A proper double lung shot on even the most mature of white-tailed deer probably ends up with a 40-yard track job. It's that simple. They can't go that far. But they can go 200 yards, 200 yards on the back of the lungs shot or more, right? Or if you got one lung, it's even worse. If you've got one lung and liver, sometimes they go and lay down, but you got to go find them, right? And if you've got a heart shot, just that heart shot, they might go a couple hundred yards. Um, I've seen it happen. Now, I'm going to move Buckley over to a proper... Oh, wait, Buckley, your legs are getting all discombobulated here. Buckley's going to let you take a quartering two shot here and show you what that's all about, right? We're doing the quartering two. This is a common scenario, right? This happens a lot with a modern crossbow and a Swahacker broadhead. Not afraid now to necessarily aim in front of this. Same level. I'm aiming at the same level but I'm gonna aim up here right now, okay? Get in, in here on a steep angle like this, where I am confident it will come out behind the leg, behind the shoulder on the other side. That gets me the top of the heart, that gets me the bottom of the lungs, all those veins and arteries up front, and it gives me a nice exit wound back here that'll spill blood across the forest floor. That's what we're looking for. That's your quartering two shot, right? Traditionally, your compound bow hunters and me with old slow equipment, I was aiming back here and usually ending up with one lung, the lung on this side, and the liver on the way out, okay? And that's just giving the deer too much opportunity to get away. Let's go back to the doe video and look at what we're talking about when we're talking about giving the deer too much opportunity to get away than what we would like. This shot, again, if we play this shot, boom. You know, a lot of people look at that and, man, that's just the most perfect shot ever, right? right behind the bones there, right in the front of the vital V maybe, and away from the meat, away from the shoulder, the, the meat of the shoulder, the mass there, and you're going to get one lung. But remember, we're coming from over here. The camera's off to my left, so I'm shooting from off to the right. It's not a big difference. Maybe the camera actually exaggerates the amount of difference, but that arrow is coming from off to the right here so it's going at an angle and it's going through the air and then when it hits that deer you know disappears through that deer it's coming out back and we know that because we examined the arrow which was left in a food plot right beyond that deer at 34 yards we found the arrow like 37 38 39 yards away from the blind a death by bungee logo on it not a lot of blood oh and it looks like it was back. Oh no, it looks like it is a stinky arrow. We're gonna find out here. The swacker opened up. Yeah, that has a foul odor. Now, if we look here, what we've got, her leg is forward. So she's exposing the heart a little bit more. That heart might be in here, right? But I'm still not aiming for there. And when we talk about shooting so low that we're where the brown meets the white, that is ridiculously low. What if I hit exactly there? And if the deer doesn't move at all, now you're going through just the bottom of the deer. You're hitting the hide, wounding the deer, and that's it. That's no good. I don't want that, right? I want to be aiming on a deer like this. I'm looking at that opposite leg, right? sort of picturing how that opposite leg is lo is looking. I want it to come out over here in the back of the deer, so I'm gonna aim like right up in here. That leg goes in like this, the shoulder blade's in here. I'm thinking I aim right here, go through the front of that deer out the back. Something like that's gotta happen. Maybe get in front of it even, if that deer were quartering to us a little bit more, maybe get in front of that bone and even aim up in here, expecting to come out up there. The way it's angled right here, that shot, you know, we're looking right there, like that's a good, we'd like to think that's a good shot with that arrow making impact right there, but the reality is I'd rather be right up in here, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Incidentally, this deer had an injury to her jaw or a deformed jaw that she was born with from birth. So her bottom jaw actually came around like this, like an S shape, had a bend in it like this, so that she could not 
chew on this side and the food on this side was their teeth didn't line up from her upper and lower jaw and she had a sort of pouch where she was just housing the food that she ate very little of it was nutrition that she was taking in and this was full of rotten food it was very sad so she was a two-year-old doe pictures of her going back to 2022 very happy to have successfully shot this deer now had i shot up in here a little bit better right gotten closer to the front probably a better blood, blood trail and that deer would not have had the uh, extra hour of suffering up to an hour i don't know it could have been half an hour it could have been 20 minutes but uh, the deer would not have gone as far really what i am saying here is modern crossbows present certain advantages right they do over traditional forms of archery they are simply better they're better they give you more options don't give up your advantages use those advantages we don't give up our advantages in crossbow hunting or anywhere else in life. Know your equipment for power, energy, speed, broadhead selection. Know your equipment. Play around with the calculators on deathbybungie.com. That's for us crossbow hunters. You compound bow hunters, you're on your own. <laughs> Times change. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.